Good afternoon, everyone. I know after lunch you're always challenging to to make sure everybody's awake, but uh, today seems to be easy because a lot of questions for Benjamin. So I will start my uh, presentation uh, slice. <clears throat> I talk about a high density uh, development. I added a mixed use uh, to make a little bit easier for what I am going to talk. Uh, before I talk, I want to give everybody a little overview of a LiPo group and uh, then follow up with the property investment and development. <coughs> LiPo group. We have a slogan we call impacting lives uh, or from womb to tomb. So we want to make sure you know, every aspect of the life are covered by our services. And uh, this is pretty much you can read. <clears throat> our business footprints is from Indonesia all the way to Beijing, Korea. So. Uh, we had uh, some development in Australia before too. So, and our business scale is uh, roughly uh, 20 listed company in Asia market, and the stock exchange. We have uh, uh, 50 independent run company over, and over 60 million customers. Uh, generally, can be grouped into three different uh, uh, groups. Retail, property, other business. Other business including media, healthcare, banking, etc. Now, <clears throat> high density development, <clears throat> what we do. Uh, let's talk about why we uh, do high density mixed use development. Of course, number one is the you know, limited land available for development, especially in the CBD area. Other reasons, you know, you do high development, high density development, you can save reducing the land cost and using that money to build better facilities and the better amenities to attract better customers. And you have a building captive market because you have a high density uh, development. You have your own captive market for commercial business, residential, etc. So the project will become a destination project. <clears throat> and also with a bigger development and high density de development, it's easier to get local government to support you. Uh, access ability to this project on um, infrastructure, you know, on investment money into other things. And uh, also convenience for one-stop shopping, you know, if everything in the one place. Uh, high Density mix use development has many other determining factors to do a one project like this. Of course, like I said earlier <clears throat> in the morning, sustainability is always the most important. Then we have to consider environmental impacts, traffic flow, you know, utility availability, etc. And uh, of course, economics trade-off between high rise and the low rise. Sometimes, you know, it's costing more to build a high-density development. <clears throat> and a broad definition of a high-density development in the planning aspect we call, we use a 300 residents per hectare. Once over that, we call high-density uh, development. Of course, low-density we'll call have less than 50 residents. I'm sure HKR, you know, has a less than 50 residents per hectare. So what is mixed use? I think everything goes. The earlier high density development like uh, <clears throat> La Defense in Paris is very good, typical. They got 20,000 population, about 1.8 kilometers, you know. And Rapongi Hill, Tokyo is another good example of a high density mixed use. They have everything, have a museum, have a school, has everything. And uh, <clears throat> in Hong Kong, we have an element, very successful, and uh, many, many, many different amenities was in, offered. <clears throat> now, what LIPO do in high-density development? 
In Indonesia, we have a very successful development called Kaman Village. <clears throat> Started 2007, project to be finished in 2016. We have a hotels, international school, shopping, hospital. It's over 300 residents per hectare. Another one called St. Moritz is similar. It's a, have a country club, office, convention space, etc. In Singapore, we don't have a mixed use, a high density development as I illustrated before, but we do have a many, many high density development like a residential flats and the hotels. <clears throat> Men in China and Hong Kong and Macau, we have a office retail. This is a high density development in Beijing. It's uh, roughly uh, <clears throat> 51,000 square meters of land, total GFA 270,000 square meters. We have a hotel office, Soho offices, movie theaters, you know, convention space, etc. It's, uh, it's quite successful in Beijing. Now, the, the key project I want to discuss about today is uh, Korea. We uh, have a project called Midan City in Yinchuan. It's in a free economic zone. <clears throat> it's a large integrated uh, development we call city development or uh, community development. Uh, Span over 13 to 15 years. As I mentioned this morning, <clears throat> it took us quite a a lot of homework to decide to, to undertake this approach to do this development. Total area is 1.8 million square meter. It's freehold. And uh, we are, GFA is about 3 million square meter. <clears throat> we decide to build this as a green city. We call walkable city. Uh, we purposely build a city with a narrow, Street, only one major traffic road. This is the one around the island of the airport. Has to be major access roads through the island. Everything else is walkable. We have a bicycle lanes, walking trails all over the place. And the climbing up the mountains. And the green area is from mountain to ocean. A central park. And... Uh, <clears throat> We are building the first green city in Korea. Ocean mountain views, all in one city. Clean air, low population density. 40% green, recycle. But we in, within the city, we're building a high density mixed use development. We call city in city. Why are we doing Korea? <clears throat> We look at the demographic of Seoul or Korea, it's right in the middle of uh, Beijing and uh, Tokyo, almost equal distance. Also within the two hour flying <clears throat> uh, circle, we have over half a billion people around. With the growing China and the second most economic country, Japan, Korea bound to be uh, playing a major role in this, in this North Asian circle. And the Incheon Airport, the Korean government made a decision to build it as uh, the most important transit hub for Northeast Asia. It's, that's a major impact to our decision because as a transit hub, even nowadays, the Chinese come to Incheon Airport to transit to Europe, to Russia, to Tokyo, and uh, <clears throat> Japanese, they fly to Incheon and go back to Japan. Amazing, because uh, just like uh, Singapore, the Indonesian go to Singapore, back to Indonesia, because there are more international flights to Japan from Incheon than in, than in country fly from one place to the other. So that made the Incheon a major hub. And we are only 10 kilometers or 10 minutes away from the Incheon Airport. So this is a very major reason for us to undertake this development. 
<clears throat> as you can see from this map, this is the airport, like Hong Kong, Lantau Island, we just report, uh, uh, presented to you by HKR. Half of this is airport, we're just 10 kilometers, our city is right here. And uh, through a bridge to connect to the major uh, uh, city, this is uh, Yinchuan and uh, Seoul, which has uh, 25 million people. The government gonna build a monorail circle around the island, one stop in our city, and there's a fast airport train to Seoul, it takes 43 minutes, one stop will be right in front of our city. <clears throat> now we decide to build an integrated, we call leisure complex. Actually it's an entertainment city because we find Korea pops are very popular around the world, and the Korea dramas, almost all Asian look at it, even my friends in America, and now they look at nothing but the Korea dramas. And the Korean plastic surgery is number one in the world. So, <clears throat> so we decide to make it an entertainment city. We have a project in the city, pardon me for my voice, because I just got over with the cold. We want to build a hospital, will hopefully be the biggest, best plastic surgery hospital in the world. And uh, <clears throat> we spoke to Chinese uh, traveling group, two of the largest one in China. They say, you go ahead, build, we'll make sure your hospitals are full. And uh, nowadays, if you walk in the Seoul city, you see lots of Chinese with the patches here, 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 here. They all come to Seoul for plastic surgery. So this is a very important uh, reason for us to decide to do this too. So we want to make sure this is an important entertainment city for Chinese because after our survey we find, you know, about five years ago, Chinese, they are looking for a place they can go for three, four days. The whole family, not just the kids, you know, including grandparents, you can find none in China. So we're trying to build a city to satisfy that. <clears throat> so we have a residential, we have a CBD area, we have almost everything. Like I said earlier, it's an all-in-one city. In the leisure, we have a <clears throat> water park, marina, we have a marina on this side, and we have a golf course, the shady area will be a golf course, we have resort hotels and uh, also integrated resort hotel. We're applying for a license for foreign gambling uh, license now. <clears throat> and the International Finance Center, we talk to Chinese banks, they love to come here. They say if, you know, there'll be two, three million Chinese come to Korea now even, we want to be there. So, and of course, we, we're looking to build the largest regional mall here. Korea and consumers are very sad, you know. Uh, there's, there was no, practically no more a year ago. Because the shopping all controlled by the chebos, the lattes, the shinsekai, they all control the, the retail destination. So it's difficult to have a stroller in their department store. It's jam-packed. So when the first shopping mall opened a year ago, it was an instant success. So we figure we'll, if we want to build a mall, we want to, in the forefront, we want to build a regional mall which will attract the Chinese and the Japanese. Japanese shoppers now, they don't shop in Japan anymore. They all come to Korea to shop because it's cheaper. Everything in Korea is cheaper. The saving not only pay for the food, for the tour, for the airplane, for the merchandise they want to buy in Japan, and we maybe still have a few pennies in the pockets. So this is a fantastic future for shopping in Korea. Of course, cannot be a city without a school and a hospital. So we were going to build an international school for Chinese residents, Japanese residents. We are going to build a, <clears throat> a overseas Korean town. A lot of Korean in America, Japan, very rich. 
but they like uh, overseas Chinese. They all want to go back hometown. So we are building an overseas Korean village here, so the rich American Japanese Chinese can come in. I mean, over Korean, overseas Korean Japan in America can buy a small condo, come in, meet the grandchildren, or bring the grandchildren here to have a school. And uh, we did the initial marketing test in America. There were about 11, 1,100 people signed up to buy. So it's, it's, it has to be very successful. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I should be faster. This is a medical facility. And we're, <clears throat> some of the facility we're building here, Integrated Resort Hotel, Lama Tower, a Chinese bank want to do this. And uh, <clears throat> medical center, we're lobbying the government to change the law because a foreigner cannot build a hospital. Now it has to be local. So we're lobbying heavily to change the law. <clears throat> we already have an international school operator signed up. And the uh, Korean government is giving us a lot of support. They also approve the immigration for Chinese. If they Chinese invest in our city, they can apply for immigration visa. In the last five years, we did a lot of lobbying on this. So finally, it's all come through. And this June, May, the central government announced they're going to change the hospital regulation. And they also want to approve the integrated resort license also. <clears throat> this is the high density development we, I want to talk about. It. This is a mixed use high density development. We have a residence, residential units, and we want to build, change a couple to a service apartment, a hotel, a major hotel, an office, and a shopping mall. And the hotel is here, VIP hotel. We changed this hotel a little bit because we are going to put a casino here underneath. So we're making a VIP hotel and a, a five-star hotel. And in an area like this, where there's no, nobody there, you need a very important uh, a project to lift all the activity come to the area. So we, we figure the resort hotel is a very international resort hotel, is the most important lead. This is how we do in other cities. When we develop a city in nowhere, we always figure out a project, a mighty important landmark project, which we can bring the interest of other developers to our city. So in this city, we decide to do, I mentioned earlier, one is the K-pop and the Korean drama. So we are going to build, invest an uh, indoor arena, which is uh, built specifically for indoor performance. Of course, plus ice skating, you know, basketball, if there is a uh, in Korea, the sports are a little weak today, but we're trying to uh, um, also make the facility available, so incentivize all these things coming up. And uh, right now, we already figure out there are almost, we can fill in the stadium for about 130 shows already. We, we already figure out the transportation can bring 10,000 people to the site every hour if we need to. So our plan is for bringing infrastructures built for Right now, first phase for 15,000 residents and uh, 1.5 million tourists with uh, room to add to 3 million tourists to come to our city. So it's, it is a very difficult project. You know, after you do all this, you have to figure out the population, the tourists, and how to not to invest a lot of money in the front first phase. In Korea, they demand you a master plan then demand you do everything one time. That's a little bit heavy up front. In other area, we can do by face. So this area, we do a master plan is a little bit smaller than we think. So that way, they ask us to build everything one shot. We don't have to spend more money than we really should. But uh, you know, so far being very good, we finished the infrastructure building, including negotiated land, uh, relocated all the farmers, 
uh, within the last five years. So now we're in the marketing phase. As I mentioned before, we are applying for license for Integrate Resort, and uh, we already have a partner to do the uh, a major Korean partner to do the indoor stadium, and uh, <clears throat> we have a several Chinese investor. Uh, they're very interested to the development. And the, the one Chinese bank want to do the Lama Tower because they're in Korea. They say, wow, the advertising is so expensive. So he says it's cheaper to do a Lama Tower in our place because there are 40 million people travel by our site every year. Everybody from in Seoul to Incheon Airport, they will see, see our city. You cannot miss it. So the advertising value is fantastic. So now we're in the second stage is marketing uh, phase. Unfortunately, you know, the financial crisis uh, slowed down us a little bit. But now we see activities coming. And um, we hope with our finger crossed, this second half and next year will be the important year for us. Well, I'm sorry, my, my throat and uh, I cannot catch with the slides. And if you have any question, I'd be more than happy to answer. <laughs>